For years, the race for AI dominance seemed like a simple contest. Who can build the single fastest chip? In that arena, NVIDIA has been the undisputed, undefeated champ, a titan casting a long shadow over the entire industry. They built the Ferraris of the silicon world and we all paid a premium for that speed. But what if the entire game is about to change? Imagine a single AI system with not 100, but hundreds of thousands of processors, all working in perfect sync like one giant computational brain. This isn't science fiction. This is Huawei's new superpod. And while the US was busy blocking individual chips, Huawei was building a system designed to win not with speed, but with overwhelming, unstoppable scale. This is the story of how the chip war was just a distraction for the real fight, the system war. And it's a war that Silicon Valley might be about to lose. If you're interested in the deep strategic moves shaping our tech future, beyond the usual headlines, do me a huge favor and click that subscribe button. We go deep on this stuff and your support is what makes it all possible. To understand the earthquake that just hit the tech world, you first have to appreciate the mountain Huawei is trying to move. That mountain is NVIDIA. For the better part of a decade, NVIDIA hasn't just been a player in AI. It's been the entire stadium. Their dominance is built on two things. The first is raw, unapologetic performance. Their GPUs, the A100, the H100, the ridiculously powerful Blackwell, are engineering marvels. Each new generation is a leap in processing power that leaves competitors in the dust. And their roadmap with platforms like the upcoming Vera Rubin and Rubin Ultra promises an almost terrifying acceleration, with performance gains not in percentages, but in multiples. The Vera Rubin platform, for instance, is a monster of efficiency and power, packing an incredible amount of compute and memory into a single dense rack. These aren't just chips. They are the engines driving the entire AI revolution. But the hardware, as powerful as it is, is only half the story. NVIDIA's real fortress has always been CUDA, its proprietary software ecosystem. Think of CUDA as the language, the operating system, and the entire toolkit for AI development. It's what lets developers actually use the power of NVIDIA's silicon. Over the years, it has become so deeply embedded in every university, lab, and major tech company that trying to build AI without it is like trying to build a modern city without electricity. It created a competitive moat so wide that no one, no matter how fast their chip, could get across. This was the world order. NVIDIA was king and its reign seemed absolute. And then, the US government decided to make that reign permanent. Through escalating sanctions and export controls, Washington tried to cut China off from these critical technologies. The goal was strategically sound. If China couldn't get the high-end NVIDIA GPUs it needed for advanced AI, its tech ambitions would be crippled. Companies like Huawei, already blacklisted, were the main targets. The message was clear. The future of AI would be designed in Silicon Valley, powered by NVIDIA, and that was that. They had cornered the market on the fastest single chip, and in the game they were playing, that was all that mattered. But under the immense pressure of those sanctions, something completely unexpected happened. What was meant to be a death blow instead became a catalyst for a radical new idea. Cut off from the world's supply of Ferraris, Huawei didn't try to build a slightly slower Ferrari. It went into its labs and designed a fleet of unstoppable all-terrain armored trucks. If this is blowing your mind, hit that like button. It tells the algorithm this is worth sharing. And stick with me because in a minute I'll show you why Huawei claims their system is 6x more powerful than NVIDIA AS best. While the world obsessed over single-chip benchmarks, Huawei was quietly changing the rules of the game. They focused on their Ascend line of AI processors, like the 910B and 910C. One-on-one, -on -one, a single chip wasn't, and still isn't, as powerful as NVIDIA's best. Early analysis showed their advanced Ascend 910C hit roughly 60% of the NVIDIA H100's performance in some tasks, an amazing feat given the manufacturing limits, but still not a head-to-head -head competitor. They were built on older manufacturing processes, a direct result of being blocked from the world's most advanced chip-making tools. But here's the pivot that the West completely missed. 
Huawei realized it didn't need to beat NVIDIA in a drag race. The Ascend chips weren't designed to be the fastest solo runners. They were designed to be the core of the world's greatest relay team. They were rugged, good enough chips that didn't need foreign parts, could be mass produced at home, and were built for one purpose, to work together in massive, unprecedented numbers. This strategy came from a simple, profound insight. The future of AI won't be limited by the speed of one processor, but by how well you can connect thousands of them. The real bottleneck wasn't just processing, it was networking. And if there is one thing Huawei knows better than almost any company on Earth, it's networking. For three decades, Huawei built the backbone of global telecommunications. While NVIDIA was mastering the GPU, Huawei was mastering how to move massive amounts of data across vast distances with almost no delay. They took this deep institutional knowledge and aimed it at a new problem. How to connect an army of their Ascend chips so tightly that they act as a single, monstrous supercomputer. So, while headlines screamed about the chip war, Huawei was secretly fighting a different battle. They were building a system where the whole was infinitely greater than the sum of its parts. This wasn't just a new chip. It was a declaration of independence written in silicon and fiber optics. And at their recent Huawei Connect 2025 conference, they finally showed the world their weapon. At an event in Shanghai, Huawei laid its cards on the table and the tech world is still trying to process the sheer scale of it. The company unveiled the Atlas 950 and Atlas 960 Superpods, systems so vast they changed the very definition of an AI supercomputer. This isn't about a new chip, it's about a new philosophy. A philosophy of brute force, overwhelming scale. Let's talk numbers, because they are genuinely mind-bending. The Atlas 950 Superpod links 8192 of Huawei's Ascend chips into a single system. Its successor, the Atlas 960, doubles that to a staggering 15,488 Ascend processors. These aren't just servers in a data center. They're designed to operate as one logical machine, to learn, think, and reason as one. The largest Atlas 960 configuration will take up 2,200 square meters, spread across 220 cabinets. The performance this unlocks is astronomical. The upcoming Atlas 960 Superpod is projected to deliver up to 30 e-flops of FP8 compute power. That number sounds abstract, but it's not. An e-flops is a quintillion calculations per second. To put 30 e-flops in perspective, to match what that system can do in a single second, every single person on Earth would have to perform one calculation per second for over 100 years. 30 e-flops means it can perform more operations per second than every smartphone on Earth combined. But even these numbers don't tell the full story. Huawei's true masterstroke, its secret weapon, isn't the chips. It's how they talk to each other. The biggest challenge in linking thousands of processors is the interconnect bottleneck. You can have all the processing power in the world, but if your chips can't share data fast enough, that power is useless. This is where Huawei leveraged its telecom dominance. They developed a revolutionary optical interconnect protocol called Unified Bus 2.0. Think of it like this. NVIDIA builds incredibly fast race cars, but to move an army, you need perfectly synchronized highways. Huawei, the telecom giant, just built a new kind of highway system for data, a private multi-lane autobahn with no speed limits and no traffic jams, letting their entire army of chips communicate instantly. This is the magic that makes the Superpod possible. Huawei claims this new protocol allows them to link thousands of chips with near-perfect efficiency, claiming a 95% efficiency rate at a scale of 8,000 chips, a figure that would make network engineers ecstatic. Let that sink in. The focus has shifted from raw chip speed to the communication speed between them. This is the moment the narrative changed. This is no longer a chip war. It is now a system war. NVIDIA's strategy is scale up. Build a more powerful individual GPU in a dense power efficient rack. Huawei's is scale out. Connect a massive number of less complex chips with a superior network, even if it uses more power and space. Huawei's rotating chairman, Eric Xu, directly claimed that a single Atlas 950 Superpod would deliver 6.7 times more computing power than NVIDIA. 
as planned NVL-144 system for 2026. And they're not stopping there. They also announced superclusters, which will link dozens of these superpods together. The Atlas 950 supercluster will integrate over half a million NPUs, and the future Atlas 960 supercluster will connect over one million Ascend chips into a single entity. These are machines designed to train AI models with tens of trillions of parameters. This is revenge, served on an unprecedented scale. The unveiling of the SuperPod system isn't just a product launch. It's an event that redraws the global technology map. The implications are huge for everyone. First, for NVIDIA. For the first time in a decade, the king of AI hardware faces a challenger with a fundamentally different and potentially superior philosophy. NVIDIA's business revolves around selling ever more powerful, high-margin GPUs. They've been playing chess, mastering powerful pieces like queens and rooks. Huawei just revealed it's playing Go, surrounding the board with a vast, interconnected network of stones. NVIDIA's next-gen platforms with racks of a few hundred GPUs suddenly look smaller in comparison to Huawei's clusters of over 15,000. While CUDA is still a powerful moat, Huawei is countering by making its unified bus protocol an open standard and building its own open source AI software stack. The goal is to create a parallel ecosystem, an alternative that frees developers from NVIDIA's walled garden. Second, for China, this is a declaration of technological independence. The US sanctions designed to cripple the nation's AI ambitions have backfired, acting as an accelerant for self-reliance. With the SuperPod, Major Chinese tech giants now have a path to build world-class AI infrastructure without a single American chip. In a clear signal of this pivot, recent reports suggest Beijing has instructed its largest tech companies to stop purchasing NVIDIA's chips and prioritize homegrown solutions. This move secures China's access to the critical computing it needs for its national AI strategy, effectively nullifying the sanctions' primary goal. Finally, for the rest of the world, this is a geopolitical earthquake. The emergence of a real competitor to NVIDIA could be fantastic news for many. Europe, which is highly focused on its own technological sovereignty, may cautiously welcome a second supplier to reduce dependency on a single American company. Even while remaining wary of security ties to Huawei, India, with its own rising tech industry and complex relationship with China, could leverage the competition to accelerate its India AI mission gaining access to powerful compute while building up its own domestic alternatives. But the biggest impact might be felt in the global south. For nations in Africa, Southeast Asia, and Latin America, the high cost of NVIDIA hardware has been a major barrier to entry into the AI race. Huawei has a long history of providing affordable infrastructure to these regions. By offering a powerful, scalable AI system, likely as part of broader infrastructure and financing deals, Huawei could democratize access to AI on an unprecedented scale, while also expanding China's sphere of technological influence. We are watching the birth of a multipolar tech world, where the future isn't decided by one company in one country. We are at a turning point. The era dominated by the race for the fastest single chip is over. We have entered a new age, the age of the system wars. The question has changed from, how fast can one chip run? To how efficiently can 100,000 chips think? Huawei, backed into a corner, has responded not by copying the champion, but by changing the entire fight. They've chosen overwhelming scale over individual supremacy, the synchronized swarm over the lone predator. This is more than just corporate competition. It's a high-stakes bet on a different vision for the future of computing. The aftershocks will be felt for years, reshaping supply chains, national strategies, and who holds the keys to the next generation of AI. One thing is now certain. The future of AI will not be written exclusively in Silicon Valley. A new contender has entered the ring, and it brought an army. The chip war was just the opening act. The system war is the main event. But what do you think? Is this a true game changer? Can Huawei's scale-out strategy really beat NVIDIA's dominance? Drop your analysis in the comments below, and let's have a real discussion about what this all means. And if you found this breakdown valuable, please consider liking and subscribing for more deep dives into the tech and geopolitics shaping our world. Thanks for watching.